an SC502 TM500 series oscilloscope plug-in on display at the Vintage Tech Museum failed. The power and trigger LEDs were illuminated, but no trace was displayed. The plus and minus 20 volt and plus 5 volt supplies were all correct. Fuse F800, a 3 tenths amp slow blow, was open. This fuse provides plus 33 volts to the CRT high voltage section, which also provides plus and minus 70 volts for horizontal deflection and z-axis. A common cause for blowing this fuse is a short in C850 or C851, which, in conjunction with L850, provide a filter to prevent noise from the high frequency high voltage supply from feeding back into the power, power module plus 33 volt supply and possibly to other plug-ins. Failure of these capacitors, which are tantalums, is common in this instrument. As can be seen in this photo, both caps have started to leak electrolyte onto the circuit board. These caps are located on the main board but not underneath the high voltage auxiliary board, which must be removed to gain access to them. Before removing the auxiliary board, remove the back panel. Remove nine screws from the back panel but not the one marked here. It holds the pass transistor for the 5 volt supply. Unplug the connector to the pass transistor, noting the location of the triangle on the connector body. There are five capacitors and a high voltage diode which go between the boards. The solder from the six pads circled in red must be removed, preferably by a vacuum desoldering tool. Three tabs from the hybrid resistor on the right, circled in yellow, must be carefully desoldered. The hybrid is fragile. The CRT filament loop around the leg of the transformer must be unsoldered. After the screw holding the board is removed, it should be possible to lift off the board. There are several wires from the board to the CRT socket. These can be left attached. The failed tantalums can be removed from above. If only one cap is bad, both should be replaced. This is the board once the caps are removed and some cleanup is done. There are modern 100 microfarad 50 volt aluminum electrolytics the same size as the original tantalums. When replacing a tantalum with a aluminum electrolytic, it is desirable to, to use at least twice the value of the original tantalum in order to try to compensate for the higher effective series resistance of the aluminum. The museum did not have any suitable capacitors in stock, and I was anxious to get the instrument back on display, so I made do with what we had a new old stock one of the original tantalums, and a 100 microfarad radio cap. The latter barely fits in the available space. The most difficult part of the reassembly is getting this auxiliary board back on because it has to be aligned with the five, count them five, one, two, three, four, five capacitors that go between the main board and the auxiliary board plus the diode, which is behind the transformer in this view. The diode is not that difficult, so you can do that later. The problem is getting the first five going. You probably want to bend these tabs that are on this hybrid resistor out of the way temporarily until you get the board in place. Once you get the board in place, then put the screw in here to hold it down and then solder the, the, the wires, the five wires. Two, three, two, three, four, five. Oh, anyway. Um, I'm not going to, I'm not going to show this all in video because I have no long, how long, I have no idea how long it's going to take and it's going to be somewhat embarrassing probably. Okay, everything is back together after about at least half an hour of pulling with the wires. I'm not sure how that was done at the factory. Probably not with a lot of gnashing of teeth and quarters in the swear jar. Well, it seems like it may be possible to, if you if you were assembling the instrument from scratch, to have the the capacitors in this this auxiliary board, and solder them to the main board later, because you'd be able to maneuver the capacitors more easily. But also, I've, I've reinstalled the, the uh, filament loop and resoldered the high voltage rectifier. So it's time to finish the assembly and see if it works.
I'm going to reattach the connector to the, um, the pass transistor, noting the direction that it goes on when I took it off. And I have to be careful to route the wire so that it doesn't get pinched when I reinstall the back panel. Okay, the next step is to reinstall five screws hold the back panel on and then the other four screws that hold it to the frame members at each corner. While I was editing this video, uh, the topic of um, intensity control problems on the SC502 has shown up on TechScope's group and uh, I find that I had a problem with that on an SC502 and the problem was the one or more of the five capacitors in the DC restore circuit uh, which are outlined here and replacing them requires almost the same amount of work as replacing the two caps uh, that are described earlier in the video and uh, if you're replacing these any of these five DC restore caps you might as well go ahead and replace the two caps on the main board that are described in the earlier part if they're tantalums 